Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing part 2 of how I found out I had kidney disease. I'm going to make this video quite short because the other one was like 11 minutes so I want to make it half that time. So I'm going to kind of speed through, not give too much details but give some details. So basically it was high school where I met Anthony which is Emery's dad. It was my senior year and soon after I found out I was pregnant. So my high school days I kind of just was living my regular high school life just you know doing whatever I wanted not really worrying about my kidney problems or my kidney disease I just thought it was something in the past so when I found out I was pregnant I made a I made an appointment to get a checkup so when I went to that appointment I remember the doctor did like I think the day before I like did lab work and then I went to go see the doctors like the consultation so I remember when I was there the doctor was telling me like hey you know your pregnancy is super high risk. It's really risky for you to continue with this pregnancy. We highly suggest you get an abortion because, you know, at your, in your spot, like, there's no chances you're going to make it. And I remember she just kept insisting it and kept saying it over and over again. And I kept telling her, no, like, no, thank you. Like, I'm going to continue with this pregnancy. And then I remember she told me, like, um, could we, um, she said, hey, like, you should go home, think about it, come back, and then tell us what you decide. But at that point, my mom was just tired of her just, like, repeating herself over and again. So she stopped her and was like, hey, no, we decided already. We're going to continue. She's going to continue with this pregnancy. So then I remember the doctor, she walked out. She was, like, obviously upset. So she just said, okay, and she walked out. And I remember we were done with that appointment, and I basically left that appointment just crying like sobbing my eyes out because the fact that like all that negativity was just said there and like she was just telling me that I should get an abortion that this and that that I wasn't like fit for this pregnancy and everything so basically I made an appointment to the high-risk doctor and the high-risk doctor told me hey um your daughter she has a uh, strawberry head shape she has a heart problem this and that telling me that she was going to be born with like a lot of complications and just all this negativity and um, I remember that he um, he said like you basically have no kidney function it's impossible for your daughter to survive and it's gonna be a miracle if if you survive and I remember then I get left that appointment and sobbing like crying with just like so much sadness and like I just felt so like empty because I was like dang all this bad news like all these doctors telling me that I was like being negligent about continuing with my pregnancy. So I remember my doctor from the OBGYN um, called me and was like, hey, we have some doctors, some friends in, in at Inova that are willing to take your case. You should go to Inova Hospital. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll go. But I thought, because she told me I would have to be hospital, hospitalized. I thought that I was going to be able to go to the hospital, probably stay there for two days, and then come out because I actually had a trip planned to go to Texas. No, go to Las Vegas with my family. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the hospital, but I have to be out in like two or three days because my trip was like on the fourth day, something like that. So I remember I got to the hospital, and I ended up staying at the hospital for more than a month. And my time at the hospital, the first three, four days I was there, I was being stubborn. I was not trying to go on dialysis because I knew my cousin, she was on dialysis and I knew what she was going through with all like the needles and the fistulas and just all those surgeries and her time on dialysis. So I knew I didn't want that. I knew like, I was like, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. Like, I don't feel like I need dialysis. And um, they were just telling me, like, you know, one minute you can feel, feel good and then the next minute just, like, faint and die. But I was like, no, like, I'm fine. And they thought that I was, like, suicidal because I wasn't trying to take treatment. And um, I remember I went, I tried going through all the loops of, like, speaking to the psychiatrist, speaking to different people, trying to, like, tell them, no, I don't want this, like, I don't want to go on dialysis. But then finally, like, the doctor came in and was like, since you're refusing so much, I forgot what he said, but he said something, and it, like, convinced me, because I was like, man, like, I don't want to keep seeing all these people, like, they're going to eventually, like, force me to do dialysis. After they convinced me to start dialysis, I remember that same night, I went to surgery to get my first cath catheter placed, and I guess it was so quickly, because the doctors, 
like they they wanted to get the catheter in quickly because they like knew that I wasn't trying to do dialysis so they were like okay now that she said yes let's get it like done now so the catheter the first one was placed right here um that was like really painful I'm gonna try to insert some pictures somewhere because I believe I have a picture of that so the first catheter was here and um, that's when I started hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is when you sit down. At that time, I was in the hospital, so I was laying down in the hospital bed. And basically takes out all your blood in the machine, filters it, and then puts it back in. So I was doing that for four, four hours every single day because I was pregnant. But regular hemodialysis patients only go three times a week to the clinic. Um, but since I was pregnant, every single day. So I was doing that for every single day. And after a week of, of being on hemodialysis, they told me that I had to get a different catheter. And this catheter was here in my chest. I still have my scar from where it was at. And this catheter goes directly into your heart. It's actually one of the most dangerous catheters there is because it's like you're basically having your heart open. So if anything gets inside of it and you get an infection, you can easily die. Like any, you, no water could touch it, nothing. So like you always constantly had to like be very careful with that. So I had this catheter for I want to say like seven or eight months, a long time, a lot, like, like a lot longer than other people have it. So basically I was at the hospital just doing dialysis for a month, over a month, and um, they, I was there for so long because I was stable um, while I was at the hospital and basically when somebody's stable you're allowed to be discharged, but they didn't discharge me because they couldn't find a dialysis clinic that would accept my case because it was so high risk. At this time, I was already four months pregnant. By the time I got out of the hospital, I was four months pregnant. So I found out I was pregnant when I was two months. Then on the third month, I was put on dialysis. So I had Emory at 27 weeks, which is six months. So basically, how that happened is that I went to dialysis. So after I was discharged, I was going to dialysis down in Woodbridge because no clinic around me wanted in my area wanted to take me. So I had to drive to Woodbridge every single day. It was like a 30 to 45 minute drive depending on traffic or no traffic. So it was really exhausting and to go there like being pregnant, I always had somebody driving me because of the risk that, you know, dialysis caused contractions. So I didn't want to like go in labor like after dialysis. But one day like after dialysis, like this is like when it happened, when it all happened, the, the night I had Emory. So I went to dialysis on a Friday, and I remember I asked my sister to take me to Potomac Meals because I wanted to get a dress for my baby shower. And when I went to go get my dress, I was like the whole time shopping, like I kept sitting down. Like I remember um, we were waiting in the line at Forever 21, I sat down, and Katie was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like I just thought I was tired because of dialysis. And I knew dialysis caused contractions, but I didn't think much of it. I thought, like, I could handle it. So after I came home from dialysis, I was having a lot of lower back pain. And I didn't even know it was contractions. I just thought it was dialysis pain. So I remember I was telling my mom how I felt because I kept, like, moving in bed, like, like in so much pain, so much discomfort. And my mom was like, you're having contractions. And I was like, no, no, I'm not. Like, it's just dialysis pain. It's going to leave. And she just kept telling me no you're having contractions and of course me being stubborn I was like no I can handle this it's not contractions and then she was like nope we're going to the hospital so we got our stuff we went to the hospital and I thought Anthony wasn't going to be there for Emery's birth because he was actually in, in New York sitting but he actually surprised me that night so he was able to make it there so basically Emery was born and she was a little preemie she was born two pounds two ounces and the next day she dropped down, dropped down to one pound, nine ounces. So she was very small and um, born at 27 weeks. So after I had her, I did dialysis every three days. I did it three times a week. Sorry, I said every three days. I did it three times a week. I did Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I went to the clinic. I was able to drive myself because I wasn't pregnant, so I drove myself to Woodbridge still. I was still going there, and until this point, I'm still doing all my stuff in Woodbridge. So I would just go there every day and um, I stayed on hemodialysis for about five or six months after Emery was um, born and my doctor, he was like, hey, you know, you're such a great candidate for P PD dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, you should really think about doing that. And I was like, no, I'm not going to get one, I'm not going to switch over to PD because I'm going to get a transplant soon. So I thought, 
Um, and I still had this catheter, which was super dangerous, and that was like their main worry. So I was like, okay, I'm going to switch to PD. So I switched to PD, and I got the surgery. I got the catheter placed. I'm going to insert some pictures somewhere, too. So that surgery was painful. Oh, my goodness. It felt like I never got a C-section. I gave birth to Emory Normal, but they say, like, getting the PD catheter placed was having... It feels like a C-section, but it was so painful. Like I couldn't even move. Hurt to cough. Hurt. It kind of hurt like to talk or just like sit up or move a certain way. So it was really painful. And I did PD. I've been doing PD since last year. So about almost a year and a half now that I've been doing PD, and that's been working a lot better than hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is so painful, and like I would not recommend that for anybody. It's like the worst type of like. It's just pain, and they even said they even tell you themselves, like the doctors will tell you that hemodialysis actually kills your body, and PD does too. It's like bad for your like the longer you're on dialysis, the worse it is for your body. So it's like I was just like so happy to be off of hemo, but now since I'm on PD, soon I'm gonna be getting my transplant. So hopefully this is all gonna be done and over with. So, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I try to make it short. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but hopefully it's not that long. But please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.